All right, you guys, so welcome to our class this morning. Uh, let's just take a moment here to tune in together and start to cultivate uh, the ideal environment for us to practice. So you can close down the eyes to begin and find the ideal comfortable seat for you if it's sitting up on a chair, if it's seated up against the wall, or maybe on the edge of a cushion. And allow the breath as long as the nose is not inhibited by blocks in the sinus. Allow the breath just to flow in and out comfortably through your nose. And use this as an opportunity to really relax the muscles in the body. Let the whole body become receptive. You can even turn the palms to face up on the lap to encourage this receptivity. Relaxing the whole body, all the muscles. Expression on the face, even relaxing. If this is a new practice for you, you can place a hand on the belly and a hand on the heart. Otherwise, we're going to direct our inner awareness to the way that the breath is physically expressing in the body. So if you have hands placed on the body, this means on inhalation, soften the belly and let it fill outward, just very subtly pressing that lower hand forwards. If you're using your awareness, just very gently draw that awareness, shining like a spotlight into this lower region of the belly. It's a rather shallow breath. There's really not much room for deep breathing, just breathing into this region of the belly or the low lungs. I like to think of our awareness sometimes as like a balloon and it's floating away, it's drifting up into the mind. And by breathing into the belly, you're sort of tugging on that string and anchoring the awareness into what's happening right now in this moment. And as you begin to feel comfortable with this breath, you may even begin to draw the breath up through the region of the ribs, expanding the ribs, and all the way up into the chest and even into the region of the collarbone. And here is where we really open our capacity to draw fullness of breath into our body. And the breath is this really interesting phenomena in the body in that it's always happening, it's always present. And that it's not by greater sense of effort that we come back into depth of breath in the body, but really it's in a greater sense of relaxation that we soften the muscles that are bound, preventing deep breath, and that we feel safe enough to release, especially this region of the belly, to invite that fullness of breath back into our bodies. It's 
So anytime you don't need the hands, you can release them. And ideally we have several rounds or more where we really feel a sense of connection to our breath. And then you can take one of your hands and let's just tap sort of right by the belly button, just in the region of the belly and centering some awareness down into the belly region. Looking down physically with the eyes. Good, and then let's move up to the heart, just a little tapping on the heart, maybe feeling a little more wakeful in your consciousness as you're lifting up higher. And then go right to the point between the two eyebrows, looking slightly upward. So you can get a sense that there are these various planes of perception in our bodies and our experience. Let's go down to the belly. And that we can freely travel in between them as we would like to. So hand into the heart. And then up to the point between the two eyebrows. See if you can notice any more subtle sense of a change of awareness in the body. Let's go down to the belly for the last time. Remember you're looking down with the eyes and notice how that affects your experience. It may feel a little duller, a little heavier, slower. Come up to the heart. Just notice if there's awakening, brightening of the awareness. And then all the way up to the point between the two eyebrows. Feeling that great sense of wakefulness in the body. Consciousness really alive when we're tapping at this point between the two eyebrows. And then relieve the tapping. Let's pause here, looking upward and slightly outward. Contrary to popular practice, the greatest benefits of our yoga asanas or yoga postures are that they directly impact and shift the state of consciousness that we're presently experiencing. So on the surface, we do get a stretch in our muscles, the blood begins to flow, and these are wonderful benefits of the practice. But more importantly, the foundation of our experience, our consciousness, begins to shift. And we can feel that in the most subtle practice of shifting our awareness from belly to heart up to the point between the two eyebrows. So when you practice today, keep lifting your energy. I'll give many reminders to do so, but feel like your spine is a great super highway for energy awakening consciousness to keep rising towards your brain. So we'll use the hands, just maybe two or three breaths here. You can free hands down by the waist and inhale like you're filling a cup. You can release the belly out, expand the ribs, broaden the chest, relax the shoulders, and draw that energy and attention all the way above the crown of the head, and then just bathe the field around you. You can think like the energy of a tree. You start with deep roots, inhaling, drawing from the earth, rising up through the lowest regions of the spine, strong in your trunk, extending branches up into the heavens, and then exhaling, releasing, and widening that magnetic field around you. One more time. Nice deep breath drawing up. And when you are ready, when your breath dictates, slowly releasing breath and arms out and around you. Just pausing here, feeling 
this beautiful central axis in the body of the physical spine, the subtle energetic spine. Inner gaze lifting. All right, and then we can slowly flutter the eyes open. Let's just rub the palms a couple times here. So generating a nice supply of heat between the palms. Let's place palms right over the eyes to cleanse the sinus using the heat of the palms with deep inhalation. Just spread the hands like your parting curtains and slide them down the cheeks, down the jaw, and then rubbing together again. Nice deep breath. Enough friction that you wake up the body, that you begin to heat the palms, and then right over the eyes, deep breath in. Spreading the hands and just softening down the face, releasing the breath out. Good. So I thought we'd start our practice today in a standing posture. So gentle as you are when you come up to your version of a standing pose. Good. And let's just go ahead and maybe shake out the hands a little bit, lightly, not too forcefully. Good. Take a nice deep breath and reach arms all the way up into the sky. Exhale, seal the hands in prayer down through the center of the heart. Again, listen for the breath. When you feel the inhalation, it pushes the arms up into the sky. And exhale, sealing hands down through the heart. So ideally, the arms begin to feel rather weightless as they're supported by the energy coming from your spine and the flow of breath flowing through your nose. We're sort of finding our way back into a graceful state. So feeling that the practice is moving through you, that your body is a channel with lots of grace, and awareness of movement as it's happening. Good. Let's take one more, inhaling, circling arms up nice and light. Good, and then exhaling hands down into prayer pose. We're going to extend arms out, and with a slight bend in the knees, you can double inhale and pull the arms apart like you're stretching a great big rubber band with tension in the arms, and then release. So we'll do it together. Releasing. A couple more times. Drawing fresh vitality into the body. One more time. All right, let's spread arms open nice and wide and you can face palms up into the sky and just close the hands in a soft fist and we'll start circling in the arms. Great for any shoulder injuries in the body to stimulate some blood flow. If it's too much, just draw hands to the shoulders and you can awaken this way. And then we'll reverse in the opposite direction as you're ready. So reversing. Good, rock right onto the ball of your foot so that you feel active and awake. Let's reverse one more time, really stimulating center of the heart. Good. Good place to start our practice with some positive energy. So we're gonna to repeat together the affirmation, I'm positive, energetic, and enthusiastic. All right, let's do it together with lots of enthusiasm. I'm positive, energetic, enthusiastic. I'm positive. Energetic, enthusiastic. I'm positive, energetic, enthusiastic. A couple more. I'm positive, energetic, enthusiastic. Positive, energetic, enthusiastic. Try coming on tips of the toes for your enthusiastic, enthusiastic. All right, and then we'll just close the eyes down. Feel all that fresh energy in the body. It feels good to affirm these qualities.
All right, and we're gonna try just a little bit of vibration through the body. So if you have uh, sensitive knees, just be mindful, but we're gonna go ahead and just sort of bounce the heels, not heavy, sending ripples through the body, but just sort of lightly bouncing up and down. You let your arms stay nice and relaxed, sort of like you have empty coat sleeves, your arms are empty. Now, if you feel more energetic in your body and you do want to take a little flight off the ground, feel free. But the idea here is just to send a little wave of energy through the body. Nice deep breathing to couple. If you have challenges with bone density, dropping the heels can be a nice practice here. And it sends a little vibration right up the body. Just be careful if your knees are sore. And if you're really enthusiastic, anybody wants to take quite a flight up, you can really bounce in the body. Just let the whole body be slackened. It's a great energizing practice. Good. Just a couple more here, smiling and enjoying. You're waking up all the muscles. All right, and then go ahead and just pause in stillness. Close the eyes, everyone we'll be able to feel the prana body, energy, energy flowing through the body, vibration. Good. All right, let's join feet together and we're gonna come right into a balance pose. So as much as your body will allow your feet come together and you just go ahead and catch your right ankle into the hand. I'll show you from the side. We're gonna come into dancer's pose. So first things is to align your knees and this for most of us is plenty and you send your opposite arm up into the sky now if this is too much just drop your back foot onto the ground and take a slight bend in your front knee and keep your arm lifted with one hand on the hip if you'd like to go even further and you're working on balance kick into the back hand and start to lower or hinge the body forward but remember, the practice is about lengthening of the spine. So reach through the crown of your head and smile in your pose. The affirmation for this pose, while moving through life, I am centered in myself. While moving through life, I am centered in myself. If anyone is athletic and wanting to really challenge yourself, just keep lowering down and kicking into that backhand as much as possible, breathing slow and steady. All right, very gentle lowering. We're gonna come right down into Muktasan, freedom pose. So just drop that foot behind you, slight bend in your front leg, and then inhale and reach up, arching as you reach to the sky. Nice deep breath here. Feeling the spine begin to awaken. You can even sweep the hands. Remember our beginning practice of carrying the hands up the body. This symbolizes the breath expanding through the full capacity of the ribs right up through the crown of the head. And then you could exhale and awaken that magnetic field around the body if you'd like. Take one more round. And we all end up with our pinkies hugging in towards the sky. Good, and very gentle exhale, hands come down through the heart center and we'll take a little step up to the front of the mat. Good, let's go ahead and just take a cleansing breath here, arms all the way up to the sky. Exhale, you can fold forwards, drop the body down and then bend the knees and slowly roll your way back up. And until you're in your standing pose, turning the palms slightly out and forwards and resting. While moving through life, I'm centered in myself. We can get a sense like a great big boulder in the center of a river, life always changing and fluctuating, but we are centered in ourself, unwavering. When you're ready, you can slowly open the eyes. We'll come to the other side. So you just catch your left ankle into your hand as much as available. If you cannot catch the ankle, just step back and keep a slight bend in your front knee. 
and you could take hands into prayer pose or join right into Muktasan. If you're coming with us into the dancer's pose, rise with the right arm and begin to first lift higher towards the sky. Even more important than being able to hinge is first getting the spine long and extended. Then you might slowly begin to hinge into your practice. If you're looking down towards the ground, try looking at least straight forwards, and some of us may be able to look up a little bit higher. This doesn't so much involve lifting the chin as it does lifting your gaze. Nice steady breath. While moving through life, I'm centered in myself. Again, if you're athletic and you want to dive even deeper into the pose, you're most welcome to, but don't sacrifice finding the hardest version of the pose and losing your sense of self, your center. When you're ready to lower out of the pose, just very gently, hands to the hips, we'll step back with our left foot, slight bend in your front knee, and then you send arms reaching up into the sky. And when we're centered in ourself, it leads to one reality, a freedom. So affirm, I am free, I am free. If you like circling the arms, feel free. And this time while circling, join your thumb and your pinkies together. This is your Lotus Mudra. And you can really feel some energy of the heart, which is devotion in our practice. And you reach that up to the sky and fill your field with that sense of devotion which is really enjoying being present for our experience here in this moment and spreading again, if you so choose, or just resting in your freedom. I am free. I am free. When you're ready to come out of the pose, you just take hands to the hips and a little step forwards. Just like the other side, let's take a cleansing breath, arms all the way up into the sky. And then exhale and fold the body forwards, gently releasing. This time let's inhale and lift halfway, active phase of your forward fold. And then you can exhale and fold forward, bend the knees and we'll roll up the spine. So awakening the low spine. Good. When you rise, just roll the shoulders back, close the eyes, and feel the effect on your consciousness. And this pause in between the poses affords us the opportunity to feel the effect that they have on our bodies, and more importantly, on our consciousness. A nice deep steadiness in the body. Can you feel that boulder like quality anchored into this present moment? Nothing and no one can disturb me. When you're ready, you can free the arms and take an expansive breath with arms wide out. And we'll come into Garudasan so you can bend your elbows. And then we'll go ahead and stack whichever side you'd like to on top. Start with hands on the shoulders. If you want challenge, back sides of the palms. Take slight bend in your knees, whichever is your top arm. For me, it's the right, so I'm going to be stepping over. You come into your Garudasan pose or Eagle's pose. If your hands can wrap around, feel free. The key in this posture is just to relax your shoulders. Soften into that sense of expanse. If you're working on balancing, then go ahead and wrap the foot around the leg or just float it above the earth. Slight bend in the knees. Wonderfully rejuvenating for shoulder joints. Keep breathing nice and steady here. At the center of life storms, I stand serene. The center of life storms, I stand serene. 
and feel that as a reality that as you have challenges around you, you are untouched, centered in yourself. When you're ready to release, start by uncrossing the foot and just drop the arms down and out of the way. Let's inhale and reach arms up into the sky. Good exhale, hands down into heart center. Inhale, takes them out broad. We'll go right to the other side, bending elbows, and set opposite side for you on top. You can hold your shoulders, or you can match backs of palms, depending on what your anatomy will allow. You take a bend in the knees, and whichever arm is on top, that is the leg that you cross over, or that you step over. Remember to relax your shoulders, those little muscles on the backside of the heart. Do not soften by stretching, only by relaxing. They activate by stretching, so just relax backside of the heart. And you might create a little energetic lock by pushing down on the upper arm and up on the bottom arm. This can create energy in the practice. Repeating the affirmation, at the center of life's storms, I stand serene. At the center of life's storms, I stand serene. Let's take one more repetition with the energy at the point between the two eyebrows and live this as a reality in your body. At the center of life's storms, I stand serene. When you're ready to release, start by unstepping the feet and get stable in your foundation, your anchor to the earth. And we're going to stay standing, release the arms and just brush the arms, inhaling, reaching up. Good, and then exhale, hands into the heart center. You can pause here or you can release hands down into Tadasana. Just take a few moments to soften back into stillness, keeping weight out towards the ball of the foot so that you are ready and awake. Relaxing yet feeling great currents of energy awakening in the body. Let's shift up like you're riding the elevator up the spine. Keep shifting energy, rising, rising, rising past the heart, up to the point between the two eyebrows. And just take one hand, pretend like you're plucking the very top of the head and just lift. Notice it pulls the whole spine right up towards the sky and then release. You'll feel this great sense of length in your spine. Slowly open the eyes as you're ready. So we'll take a walk to the front of the mat here. You can take hands onto hips as you need. And you just sort of look with a few steps back and we're coming all the way back, all the way. And as far back as your body will allow, let's straighten our front leg here. Straight doesn't mean totally straight. Keep slight bend in the knee. Good. We're going to open our hips out to the side. So both hands on the hips. You can pretend like you're looking over your left shoulder and you can release the back of the hand towards the knee and send other arm reaching up to the sky for triangle pose. Now as is available, you can begin to fold in this front hip crease and begin to lower down. So a little pressure on the back of the hand keeps us really honest in this pose so that we're not holding onto the leg and collapsing in the spine. It also affords you to open out through the right side of the body and look up towards the sky. Let's find our affirmation for this pose. Energy and joy flood my body cells. Joy descends to me. So look up to the top hand if you can. If you cannot, that's quite all right. Just keep looking down to the earth and feel the affirmation one more breath. Energy and joy flood my body cells. Joy descends to me. 
Let's go ahead and just slowly begin to rise like you're holding onto a rope above the head. Send both arms and reach and shine the palms up to the sky. Good, we're gonna slide down into our warrior two pose. So bending front knee, open the arms, palms face up in this version, relaxing your shoulders. And we're looking over the middle finger line of our palm here, nice and steady in the pose. And you want to imagine that your tailbone is tucking underneath. So the pelvis wants to lift up and forwards here. And this really helps you to draw in through the thighs, to squeeze in the low of the body, not in a binding way, but just enough energy to keep you stable in the pose. Good, warrior two pose. I joyfully manifest the power of God. Feel that energy expanding from your heart. I joyfully manifest the power of God. Great strength in your body. Let's turn the back palm down and we're going to sweep down. Watch the hand as it comes down and we'll round right into warrior one pose. So these poses are quite linked in their energy. We're dealing with will and power. Nice deep breath, reaching through tips of the fingers. I attune my will to the source of all power. So we're joyfully manifesting the power of God, and we are attuning our will to the source of that power. And feel the great energy and strength in your body. With this divine current flowing through your body, you can hold these postures for much longer than you're used to. When you're ready to descend down, slowly draw the hands down into the heart, and then we'll draw hands to the hips, and you might take a little hop, hop, and right up to the front of the mat. Let's close the eyes, drop the hands, and feel onto the left side of the body that has been activated so much. All the cells glowing, stimulated. Feeling a rising quality of inhalation through the left side of the body. And when you are ready, slowly fluttering the eyes open, we'll take hands back to the hips. And this time, left foot steps back. So you can sort of probe into the unknown with that foot if you'd like. Otherwise, try hovering all the way back. You might stand on one leg and just really reach as far back as possible and then settle into the pose. So your hips are going to open out to the side and your front leg is rather straight. If you're very flexible, make sure there's a little bend in that knee. Start by drawing down with the right hand through the inner thigh. You can take the other hand and draw it up the body and reach up into the sky. Good. And remember that the focus is on length through the spine. Don't be distracted by your limbs. Reach through the crown of the head. That's really the aspiring energy in every pose. Push through soles of the feet to stay active and engaged in the pose. Now, if you have the freedom to do so by hinging into this front hip crease and you can go further, feel free, but keep energy in the spine. I spent many years thinking that you needed to manifest the maximum potential of every pose. And often you sacrifice some of the greatest benefits by doing so. Feel the energy flowing through the spine. Energy and joy flood my body cells. Joy descends to me. Another time with wakefulness in the consciousness, energy and joy flood my body cells. Joy descends to me. 
Taking a moment of respite, inhale and reach up to the sky like you're pulling on a rope, both arms up into the sky and press the palms up. We're going to turn them to face each other and look towards your front knee and just begin to open the arms into your warrior two pose, shoulders relaxing. This pose is a slightly different energy in the sense that we're drawing through the inner thighs. We're gathering like many roots, pulling nutrients up into the life and the trunk of the spine, arms extending. And your gaze is fixed on one point, looking from the point between the two eyebrows with great intensity, manifesting the power of God in your posture. Feeling the steadiness of your breath. Arms are an extension of your spine. If you need to rest, feel free to rest. Find the graceful expression, dropping back palm facing down. We're going to sweep around and watch that hand as it rises up. Your hips follow as you orient yourself towards the front and lift energy up through the palms. If shoulders grow tired in any pose, hands right into the heart. If your shoulders are getting tired, it may be physical limitation, or you might just need to let your shoulders or your arms rest down into the shoulder so we can aspire up, but not by overextending. Attuning our will to the source of all power I attune my will to the source of all power. Nice and steady, your legs revitalized by every passing breath. When you're ready to rise out of the pose, let it be very slow and consistent, smooth, graceful, hands down to the hips. You just take a little pulse forwards, maybe one, maybe two or three, until you're at the front of the mat. Let's just surrender the arms down towards the earth and close the eyes. Take a little rocking from heel to ball of the foot so that you can really feel the difference in energy. Resting on the heels sends energy down the spine. Resting on ball of the foot dominantly lifts energy up. All right, very gently opening the eyes. So let's take feet just a little bit wider here and we're gonna energize the base of the spine. So you can do so by sending your hips in one direction and your shoulders in the opposite. It's like you're holding onto a stick and your hips go one way. And I think someone from our center calls this the chubby checker. So feel free to dive into this. So again, hips go one way, shoulders go the opposite. Good. And then nice deep breath, we'll free arms up into the sky. Exhale, hands into the heart. Good. One more awakening for spine. Let's take hands onto the hips and we'll bend the knees and then just stir the body around in a circle. There's no posture that can quite get into this space, like circling in the low of the spine. So your hips are completely stationary. It's just the upper body with a slight arch in the spine that finds you circling around. Then reverse the direction. And let's go side to side. This is more energetic. So not so much of a focus on maximum bend, but in upward rising energy, lots of energy. And then when you're ready, just slowly relax, close the eyes for a moment. Feel the effect on your consciousness. Good. 
Nice deep breathing. Take a few moments just to fold forward and allow all the liberated energy to travel up the spine. So if you're limited by just folding the body at your own experience, then keep the forearms resting on the thighs and bend the knees. In a forward fold, just make sure that the back of the neck and the head release towards the ground. If your hands are free, massage the scalp. You get a little bit of awakening here of all the various cells in the brain awakening. Flex the face here, so no matter what pose you're in, squish the eyes close together, wrinkle the nose, scrunch the forehead, and especially stick out the tongue towards the chin on open mouth exhale. The tongue is connected with the vagus nerve associated with our fight or flight response. So to discharge stress out of the body, stick the tongue out. Some yogis pull on their tongue, but just be gentle. Nice deep breathing in the pose here. The affirmation, nothing on earth can hold me. Nothing on earth can hold me. You're affirming your spirit. Nothing on earth can hold me. Just taking the time in the pose when you're ready to ascend can be helpful to press off of the thighs if your body's very sensitive. Just keep bending the knees and slowly head is the last part of the body to rise. Open the eyes and squeeze the thighs if you get any sense of lightheadedness. And let's just free the hands, backside of the palms, leading up into the sky. Nice deep breath. Good. And then exhale, turn the palms down towards the earth. Inhale, just let the back sides of the palms lift. Exhaling, spreading that energy out wide. One more time, inhaling to rise. Exhaling to spread energy out in the field around you. Eyes closed, moment of integration. All right, very gently, we're going to take hands and interlock the fingers in front of the heart. So this is a lung for our a pose for opening the lungs. And you're just going to inhale your left side up and then exhale right side down. You can get a slight clap of the arms against the body, but just be gentle, nothing forceful. And it'll just stimulate enough energy, enough breath in the body. And you're actively pulling hands away from each other. It's a wonderfully activating pose. Stay with it for just a little bit here. And slow it down here, coming back to neutral. Take a deep breath in, reach your arms up. And just gently release the arms down. So notice there could be some awakening sensations. A nice deep breath in the body. Again, if you ever feel lightheaded by any of our practices, just open the eyes and squeeze the thighs. Relaxing into the pose. All 
All right. Very gently, we'll move into our next and final standing posture. We're going to practice a warrior three pose. So for some of us, just stepping back in this manner and reaching the arms slightly above the head, levering forward, this is plenty of extension in our bodies. So it'll take us through many expressions here. Hands can come into the heart if shoulders are sensitive, like you're looking over the top edge of your mat to see what's going on. If you feel that you can inspire up onto the left leg, keep toes flexed towards the face on the back foot and begin to push out through the heel, finding great energy through the back leg. Standing steady here. Some of us will extend arms open wide like we're flying in the sky. Squeeze the glute muscles. This encourages mula band or the root lock in the body. Hold steady in your pose as you will. If anybody wants to take this pose even a step further, you can transition by dropping left hand to the ground toes facing out to the right side and reach your top arm up to the sky. So breathing nice and steady here. Try to smile right at the most challenging aspect of the pose to remind yourself that joy is far more valuable than any sense of outward progress. When you're ready to lower down, you just slowly descend with the back foot and then come back up to neutral. Let's take our step forwards and just free that leg that you were just balancing on out and around. You can hold the hips if need be. Freeing around and then reversing the direction. Energizing the body. Let's come on to other side as you're ready. Up to the front of the mat. Remember, you can just send left foot back and reach the arms up high, or even just stand with hands in front of the heart. If you'd like to come further, start with hands in Anjali Mudra and begin to lift your back leg. Your toes are flexing towards the face, and you're pushing energy through the heel. You can keep lowering as much as you'd like to in the practice. If anybody wants to drop the right hand down and open left hand as your toes point towards the opening side of your hips, then you can come into a completely different pose, but equally interesting, spreading in every direction. Holding on to your pose nice and steady, breathing. Nice deep breath. I sail serenely through skies of inner freedom is the pose. Feel that inner freedom awakening in your body. Please don't push yourself beyond what the body is ready for. I sail through skies. I sail serenely through skies of inner freedom. Good, nice deep breath, finding energy flowing into the limbs of the body. Come back and down in with a foot extended back just to rest for a moment. Then you can take your step forwards. Let's just free that right leg that was supporting us, circling around. And reversing the direction. All right. Coming into neutral here, take hands, soft fists at the heart, double inhale in. Double exhale, extend out, reaching forward and relaxing. Feeling the body rejuvenated with fresh energy. So double inhale, takes hands very soft into the heart. Double exhale, release the breath and hold out as long as comfortable. It's almost as though you're creating a vacuum of energy into the body. Again, repeating a couple more times here. Inner gaze at the point between the two eyebrows. Relax the entire body. You might even smile as you feel great inner shifts of energy. you're ready.
ready hands joining in to prayer. Just feel the body refilled with vitality. Using the willpower to draw energy and recharge the cells. It's like opening a jar underneath water. If we just give the invitation to this cosmic current and we take that cap off, great supplies of energy come pouring into our bodies. All right, as you're ready, slowly opening the eyes, make any which way down to the earth. So some of us may forward fold, others may even come into a downward facing dog, walking feet away from the hands. And all paths lead to child's pose. So feel free to stay in your down dog for several breaths here. But if you need to rest, you come down onto knees and drop the forearms. For the easy version, head comes down. If you can take a full child's pose, just untuck the toes and sit back. Or you can stay in your down dog and with deep calmness, breathe. Looking towards your lap if you're in downward facing dog, flushing out any restlessness in the body. So that this moment becomes the only place that you would prefer to be. Downward facing dog, you're pressing off of tips of the fingers, top side of the palms, heels are heavy, and your hips keep turning higher up towards the sky, sits bones rising. Relax your way into the pose. When you've had your experience, you come down onto your knees and take a child's pose. We'll all meet there together, relaxing the forehead down towards the earth. And there's this beautiful connection point of the point between the two eyebrows with the earth or with where it falls. Center your awareness down. We awakened all of these various currents of energy in the body. The affirmation, I relax from outer involvement into my inner haven of peace. And this outer involvement is in the senses. Paramahansa Yogananda would call these the sense telephones. So hang up the sense telephones and turn your awareness inward. Keeping the inner gaze lifted. If anything needs to circulate through the mind, let it be something that you choose to intentionally repeat. It could be an affirmation, I am peace, I am peace. Avoid letting the mind wander into idle thinking. All of your thoughts unified in one direction, all bodily energies towards inner calm in heart and mind. When you're 
ready to exit the pose, just slide the hands back towards the knees and slowly draw the belly up into the spine. So your head's the last part of the body to rise. It's nice to rise right into a cat pose on tips of the fingers, looking towards the belly. And then very gently as it's natural, you just settle back down onto the palms. We'll swing the feet out of the way and begin to settle feet in front of our bodies. Let's just take a moment here to hold on the back side of the thighs, knees and feet nice and close together and lift your heart. Feel that beautiful channel that is your spine wide open. Sit nice and tall. If you don't need the hands, just let the hands be flying free here. You're relaxing and feeling the great vital flow of energy rising up to the point between the two eyebrows. And the last of our inquiries is to send our feet together and let knees spread apart. The closer the feet are to the body, the more challenging it is to fold. And we'll just very gently, whatever is available to you, lower the head, lower the back, lower the heart towards the earth. You can hold on to your feet if you'd like. Some of us can walk hands beyond the feet and really bow ourselves down. Find a place to settle into, repeating the affirmation, secure in myself, I accept whatever is. Secure in myself, I accept whatever is. Make sure to release the back of the neck and the head that you're not holding or pinching in any way. The consciousness is not sleeping. In fact, it's more awakened than we usually experience, alive and interested. Take as much time as you'd like in the pose. And when you are ready to exit, if this is a challenging pose, you just slowly rise back up and we'll fold the knees together and then gently descend onto the back. Legs can extend long. And actually, we'll try one more pose here just because it is a, an interesting inquiry in the body, which is fish pose. So if you have a slight bend in your elbows, hands are coming somewhat near the hips or the glutes. I like to take my heels and kind of inch them forward a little bit further. And what it does, it starts to roll the pelvis and you'll find a greater arch in the low spine. Now when you're ready, press into the elbows and lift the head so that it's balancing on the earth, on the back, the top side. Now the weight is in the shoulders, I mean in the elbows rather. So make sure that you don't put too much weight on your neck and you're lifting your heart up to the sky. Arching in the low spine here, right up through the thoracic. Nice deep breathing. This is as far as we'll go in this class today. Staying in the pose for only as long as available to you. So you might need to adjust the arms in a little way just to provide more support. When you're ready to lower down, just slide the head out of the way and slowly melt the body back down onto the ground. Take feet to the earth and wave the knees side to side if the low back feels any discomfort. For the rest of us, knees can come into the chest, a little rocking. And as you see fit, extending one leg at a time, we'll come down into Shavasana. Our final resting pose, turning palms to face up. 
If you have a blanket, now is a good time to lay the blanket over the body. It can also be helpful to slightly tuck the shoulder blades underneath the heart. This just allows the arms to naturally turn out. And if the body needs a little extra help relaxing into the Shavasana, take a double inhale with me and lightly tense the whole body and then release. Again, squeezing every muscle that you can bring under your awareness and then releasing. One more time. Light tension throughout the whole body to encourage great balancing of the inner energies and then relax and release. The eyes are closed for Shavasana. The inner gaze is upward turned. All of the active energy in the body is draining away from preoccupation in the limbs, that is the feet and ankles, the calves, knees, thighs, and hips. That is the hands, wrists, forearms, elbows, upper arms, even shoulders. Like many great rivers, all feeding back into the ocean, let all of your energy, your awareness, come right into the spine. And feel the great undercurrent that you have cultivated in your practice of upward rising energy. Pushing, drawing up through the spine to the point between the two eyebrows. Repeat the affirmation as our final inquiry before we take silent Shavasana. Bones, muscles, movement, I surrender now. Anxiety, elations, and depression, churning thoughts, all these I give into the hands of peace. Feel this in your heart as you repeat it for the response, bones, muscles, movement, I surrender now. Anxiety, elations, and depression. Churning thoughts. All these I give into the hands of peace.
Gently as you're ready, you can begin to invite wakefulness back to the mind. Before stirring in the body, let there be several moments of an expanding awareness of how your body feels in this moment, the quality of that feeling, the quality of feeling in your breath, From this place, you can invite some gentle movements into the fingers and the toes, keeping awareness inwardly focused with eyes closed. As you're ready to do so, arms can extend up overhead, breathing fresh vitality into the lungs, into the whole body. As is natural, you can just roll right off to your right side. And gently press your way back up to a seated posture. Take your time though. Easy does it. When you do arrive back in your comfortable seat, see to it that your spine is nice and long, rising up to the sky. Take a few moments to feel the benefits of our practice. the great current of rejuvenating energy flowing into your body, the life that fuels your consciousness, the love that glows in the heart, not as your own creations, but as the free flowing conscious bliss of the soul. Let's join the hands together in front of the heart's altar and we'll say some prayers and share good energy with brothers and sisters around the world. So feel that light, conscious, expanding light is emanating from every cell in your body out into this beautiful creation and that that light is intelligent and uplifting all other beings. Even if this means that they smile a little bit more today, maybe it means for them that they just have relief from suffering. Some people it may be experienced as deep joy or meaning in their lives. We'll pray for the well-being of others, just rubbing the palms together. Open the palms up nice and wide, deep breath in. Oh. that this cosmic current that flows into us is more 
truly who we are than this body temple or this personality or our likes and our dislikes. We honor this truth in all beings by saying namaste, namaste. A little bow of the head, offering humility. Thank you, you guys, for joining this morning.